So after the last two videos, we left off here. On the left, we got our machine steel rings. Uh, I followed and sounded down the inner surface, giving it this rounded profile. Uh, but I left the outside as is. I kind of like the helical tool marks that uh, come from power feeding on the lathe. And on the right, we have the 24 karat gold ring that I formed from an 8 gram coin. The first step is cutting the gold ring into two parts. I measured out the width of the smaller ring, plus half a millimeter extra, and I'm going to use the caliper to scribe it onto the gold. Unfortunately, I then proceed to do this pretty much entirely off frame, so I'm just going to skip to the final product. To cut it, I have this jeweler saw. It has a very small, very fine blade, less than 10,000 thickness. That's about a quarter millimeter. It took a while to figure out how to hold the piece while working on it. I don't know if I really found a satisfactory solution. But here you can see a couple attempts at using a bar clamp as a device. It's a little better, but you can also see that the pressure from my fingers uh, squishes the already cut part of the gold back into the path of the blade, so that's not great either. But whatever, I cut into two pieces, so mission accomplished. I cleaned up the edges with a little bit of filing and sanding, and it's starting to look like it's getting there. The next step is assembling the gold liner into the steel ring. I made it to be a snug fit, so I'm using the press. Once it's in there, I'm using this taper die to expand the gold so that it captures the rounded inner contour of the steel ring. The thinner ring was kind of an interesting case. Uh, it's a little bit easy to, easier to see in this sped up video, but I ended up pressing it quite a lot. Uh, I ended up, in fact, bottoming out the two swaging dies so that they were, you know, resting on each other rather than uh, pressing on the, the gold. And I thought this was due to, you know, some kind of miscalculation in, in the size that I needed. But it turns out I ended up stretching the steel ring. It was supposed to be a five and a quarter, and you can see that the edge of the ring is a bit taper. It seems to have stretched more on one side than the other. My solution was to make this tapered die. It has a hole sized so that the ring can only pass through after being squeezed back to the desired size. It didn't work. The steel was just too elastic. It passed through the die, but it sprang right back to the same size it was before. I didn't want to make yet another reducing die, so I just left it as is. To close the remaining gap between the gold and the steel, I turned to a more low-tech solution, hammering it. In lieu of a ball-peen hammer, I just used the sizing handrail, which is actually a pretty heavy piece of hardened steel. And so on, you get the idea. After this, I filed the gold flush to the edge of the steel. And I'm sorry, but the rest of this video is actually just going to be a slideshow. I ended up not having enough gold for the full width of the wider ring. So there's some unfortunate gaps along the edge. But you know, a little bit of camera magic and you can't even notice. I also tried polishing it, which didn't really work. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Here's some stainless rings I made. Look how shiny they got. I don't know what's going on with the gold. Maybe it's too soft, or the compound, or the wheel I'm using is wrong. Anyways, that was my process of turning this and this into these. Thank you for watching.